Knowledge Management and Collaboration. Assess the role of knowledge management, or KM, and KM programs in business. Describe the types of systems used for enterprise-wide knowledge management and demonstrate how they provide value for organizations. Describe the major types of knowledge management work systems and assess how they provide value for firms. And finally, to evaluate the business benefits of using intelligent techniques for knowledge management. By the end of the two weeks, you should know about artificial intelligence, AI, communities of practice, computer aided design, data mining digital asset management systems, expert systems, explicit knowledge, fuzzy logic, genetic algorithms, intelligent agents, neural networks, tacit knowledge, and virtual reality systems. Now what you should do in the very outset is to read the, the, the set reading on Procter & Gamble. Now what have they managed to do, Procter & Gamble? This case study discusses the deployment of content management systems at Procter & Gamble to facilitate knowledge sharing and eliminate paperwork and its effects on workflow. You should try to examine why knowledge is important to Procter & Gamble. You should also describe the business value of the content management system to a company like P&G. What effects did implementing the knowledge system have on employees? Were there detrimental effects on employees? Knowledge sharing is key to success and survival. Explicitly, communities of practice, knowledge sharing initiatives, knowledge community, and various things are looked at with this. Certainly a good reading. What's a community of practice? COP. What it is, is a new organizational form alongside work groups, project teams and informal networks. Community of practice. A group of people bound together by shared expertise and passion for joint enterprise. It promises to radically galvanize knowledge sharing, learning and change. This is what Etienne Wenger and William Snyder said in, in, on the 22nd of the 2nd, 2000 at the Harvest Business School. So what are we looking at here? A group involved in, naturally, because members have common interests or can be created specifically for gaining knowledge in their field. It's through sharing information and experiences that members learn from each other 
and have opportunity to develop themselves personally and professionally. When we look at this knowledge management landscape, we see that sales and enterprise content management software are expected to grow 15% annually until 2012. Now in the information economy, the labour force of 55% are knowledge and information workers. So we've got there a substantial part of a firm's stock market value is related to its intangible assets. The intangible assets are things obviously that you can't touch. Knowledge, brand reputation and unique business processes. Knowledge based products can produce extraordinary ROI. Anything else? More than half of the value of all stocks listed on the New York Stock Exchange is attributed to intangible assets like knowledge and know-how. Three definitions. Data is the flow of events or transactions captured by an organization's system that is useful for transisting, sorry, for transacting, but little else. Information is organized data. A firm must expend resources to organize data into categories of understanding. And knowledge is information that a firm has expended additional resources on so as to discover patterns, rules, contexts where knowledge works. So you take data and you basically do things to it. You take information and you organize it. So information is organized data. Knowledge is information that the firm has, has put resources on to, to look at patterns, rules and contexts. When we look here, what we have is knowledge management software revenues from 2005 to 2012. It's illustrating the go growth of knowledge management software in the United States along with sales predictions until 2012. And what it's doing is making this type of software among the fastest growing types of software applications. It's a good in indicator of the increasing importance companies are placing on knowledge and its contribution to their bottom line, the amount of money they take. Now if we look here, we can see this slide and the next one begin to answer the question, what is knowledge? Knowledge in a firm is intangible, in that you can't sort of pick it up. It's in people's heads, isn't it? creation of knowledge from data, information, requires organizational resources. Then it's shared experiences. Knowledge has different forms. It can be explicit, it's documented and written down, or it's tacit residing in people's minds. Know-how, craft, skill, how to follow a procedure, or it's 
casual causality, knowing why things happen. Okay. Now knowledge has a location. Let's go back to there. Knowledge is a firm's asset for an electric appliance firm knowing how to make the most efficient and cheapest air conditioner. What is meant by intangible? Explicit knowledge might be knowledge you have about uh, about computer programs. You might have it written down. But then the, the way that somebody does various tasks, the way that things are done in the in the company, are residing in the minds of people and may not be written down. Okay, let's move along. has a location. Both social, it's a cognitive event. It's both social and individual. It's sticky, hard to move, situated, enmeshed in the firm's culture, contextual, works only in certain situations. Knowledge is situational, knowing when to apply a particular procedure, knowing circumstances to use the certain tool. Let's go back to intangibles. There are two primary forms of intangible. Legal intangibles, such as trade secrets, customer lists, for example copyrights, patents, trademarks and goodwill, and competitive intangibles such as knowledge activities, knowledge know-how, collaboration activities, leverage activities and structural activities. Legal intangibles are known under the generic term intellectual property and generate legal property rights defensible in a court of law. Competitive intangibles, whilst legally non-ownable, directly impact effectiveness, productivity, wastage and opportunity cost, costs within an organisation, and therefore costs, revenue, customer services, satisfaction, market value and share price. Human capital is the primary source of competitive intangible for organisations today. Human capital is primary source of competitive intangibles for organisations today. Competitive intangibles are the source from which competitive advantages flow or is destroyed. The area of finance that deals with intangible assets is known as intangible asset finance. Now, organisational learning. What's the process in which an organisation learns? Well, you gain experience through collection of data, measurement, trial and error, and feedback. And you adjust your behaviour to reflect this experience. You can create new business processes, change patterns of management in decision making. In organisational learning, knowledge becomes the driver of new behaviour. A decision making, new products and services, new business processes, 
This might be seen also as organizations sensing and responding to their responding to their environment. In a school, a hospital or a bank, clothing mass manufacturer. You might find examples of how that business might demonstrate organizational learning. slide continued the discussion from the previous slide in answering the question what is knowledge as it pertains to the organization for example what is an example of knowledge with a social basis what's the, an example of knowledge with a sticky that is sticky what's sticky about so there's an area you need to <coughs> see what it says sticky, hard to move, situating, enmeshed in the firm's culture, contextual, works only in certain situations, intangible asset, assets are defined as identifiable non-monetary assets that cannot be seen, touched or physically me measured which are created through time or effort and that are identifiable as a s separate asset. There are two primary forms of intangibles. Legal intangibles such as trade secrets, customer lists, copyrights, patents, trademarks and goodwill and competitive intangibles such as knowledge activities, know-how, knowledge, collaboration activities, leverage activities and structural activities. Legal intangibles are, are known under the generic term intellectual property and generate legal property rights defensible in a law court. Competitive intangibles, whilst legally non-ownable, directly impact effectiveness, productivity, wastage and opportunity costs within an organisation, and therefore costs, revenues, customer service, satisfaction, market value and share price. Human capital is the primary source of competitive intangibles for organizations today. Competitive intangibles are the source from which competitive advantage flows and is, is destroyed. The area of finance that deals with intangible assets is known as intangible asset finance. Okay, organizational learning. This describes the process of gathering, creating and applying knowledge. You'll be surprised that organizations learn and others provide many examples of organization which refuse to learn anything. In organizational learning, knowledge becomes the driver of new behavior, decision making, new products and services, new business processes. This might also be seen also uh, this might also might be seen also as organizations sensing and responding to their environment. Think of a school, hospital, bank, clothing manufacturer. Now provide examples of how that business might demonstrate organizational learning. What about the big three car makers? 
what have they learned in the past 20 years? Knowledge management. Business processes in organization to create, store, transfer and apply knowledge. Now this slide defines the term knowledge management and describes the process from acquiring knowledge to applying it as a value chain and is followed by slides detailing each stage. Each stage of this chain adds more value to the raw data and information. Now can you differentiate between the stages? and how each stage could incorporate more value. For example, how does knowledge, once it's stored, incorporate more value than the previous stage? Knowledge that is being acquired. So what have we got? We've got knowledge acquisition, knowledge storage, knowledge dissemination, and knowledge application. So let's have a look. Knowledge management value chain acquisition. Now we've got tacit and explicit knowledge. Storing documents, reports, presentations and best practices. and then unstructured documents, e.g. E email, developing online expert networks, creating knowledge, tracking data from TPS and external sources. Knowledge storage. Of course, databases, document management systems, ways in which knowledge is stored as well as the importance of managing in creating and maintaining repository of knowledge. So you've got support development of the planned knowledge storage systems, databases, encourage development of corporate wide schemes for indexing documents, reward employees for taking time to update and store documents properly. So what you've got to do is to pass on the fact that knowledge is valuable and therefore updating and storing documents properly is a valuable thing that needs to be rewarded. Portals go back. Portals. Knowledge dissemination. Now what are we looking at when we talk about portals? Examples of how you've received knowledge from a job. Perhaps a job you've had um, prior to university or college. What not type of knowledge was transferred and what means were used? Were these methods of dissemination adequate or do they see, do you see more effective ways to disseminate the same information? How can a company or its employers have too much information? So you've got portals, push email reports, search engines, collaboration tools, a deluge of, of information. That's training programs, informal networks and shared management experiences or experience help manage focus attention on important information. The last stage of knowledge, the knowledge value chain is knowledge application. 
what we need to do is to emphasize the need to see and evaluate knowledge in terms of organizational capital and return on invest investment from your own experience in education and work of how new knowledge can result in new business practices, new product and new market. So these are things that they're needing to come, knowledge application. To provide return on investment, organizational knowledge must become system, systemic, systematic part of the management decision making and become situated in the new support systems. So you've got new business practices, new products and services, and of course new markets. So if we look here, you can see that knowledge management value chain has an involvement with both the information systems activities and a host of enabling management and organizational activities. So when you look at it, you've got data and information acquisition, collecting, storing and disseminating. Okay, so you acquire knowledge discovery, data mining, neural networks, genetic algorithms, knowledge workstations, expert knowledge networks. Now when, what do you do? You store content management systems, knowledge databases, expert systems. Then you disseminate internet portals, push email reports, search engines, collaboration, and then you apply decision support systems, ent enterprise applications. But of course you've got here management and organizational activities. And then it talks about knowledge culture of communities of practice, personal networks, organizational practice routines, organizational routines and organizational culture. And you've got training, informal networks, organizational culture, new IT based business processes, new products and services and new markets. Now all of these are working together in some sort of chain, you see it there. This is a knowledge management system. Last week we were talking about data mining. Data mining is the process of extracting patterns from data. look at this data mining, what we need to do is to have a think here. Data mining is an information analysis tool that involves the automated discovery of patterns and relationships in a data warehouse. Like gold mining, data mining sifts through mountains of data to find a few nuggets of valuable information. The Hartford Life Insurance Company, for example, uses data mining to extract detailed information about its customers to increase sales and profits. The data mining tool helped the company generate record sales, up over the 40% for the previous year. According to Victoria Severino, Chief Information Officer for Hartford, we model against these trends and come up with an unexpected risk scenario of the guarantees we offer. We also model risk based on a policyholder's behavior. Data mining has been used in the air airline passenger profiling system used to block suspected terrorists from flying and, and the Total Information Awareness Program which attempts to detect patterns of terrorist activity. Organizations are also investing in systems for data mining to meet new government regulations. Data mining's objective is to extract patterns, trends and rules from data warehouses to evaluate predict or score proposed business strategies which in turn 
will improve competitiveness, increase profits and transform business processes. It's used extensively in marketing to improve customer retention, cross-selling opportunities, campaign management, market, channel and pricing analysis, and customer segmentation analysis, especially one-to-one -one marketing. In short, data mining tools help users find answers to questions they haven't thought to ask. E-commerce presents another major opportunity for effective use of data mining. Attracting customers to websites is tough. Keeping them can be next to impossible. For example, when web retail websites launch deep discount sales, they cannot easily determine how many first-time customers are likely to come back and buy again. Nor do they have a way of understanding which customers acquired during the sale are price sensitive and more likely to jump on future sales. As a result, companies are gathering data on user traffic through their websites and storing the data in databases. This data is then analysed using data mining techniques to personalise the website and develop sales promotions targeted at specific customers. Predictive analysis is a form of data mining that combines historical data with assumptions about future conditions to predict outcomes of events such as future product sales or the probability of a customer that a customer will default on a loan. Retailers use predictive analysis to upgrade occasional customers into frequent purchases by predicting what products they will buy if offered and if offered an appropriate incentive. Genalytics, genal genalytics magnify NCR Teradata, SAS Institute, Cywood, SPSS and Quadstone have developed predictive analysis tools. Predictive analysis software can be used to analyse a company's customer list and a year's worth of sales data to find new market se segments that could be profitable. Traditional database management system vendors are well aware of the great potential of data mining. Thus, companies such as Oracle, Sybase, Tandem and Redbrick Systems are all incorporating data mining fun functionalities into their products. So, branding and positioning of products and sales. Customer churn predict customer, current customers who are likely to switch to a competitor, competitor. Direct marketing. Identify prospects most likely to respond to a direct marketing campaign, such as direct mailing. Fraud detection. Highlight transactions most likely to be deceptive or illegal. Market Basket analysis. Identify products and services that are most, li most commonly purchased at the same time e.g. nail polish and lipstick. Marketing segmentation. Group customer based on who they are or on what they prefer. Trend analysis. Analyzing. Analyze how key variables e.g. sales, spending, promotions vary over time. And going back to branding and positioning of products and services what do they do? They enable the strategist to visualize the different positions of competitors in a given market using performance or other data on dozens of key features of, a, of the product and then to condense all the data into a person, perceptual map of, of only two or three dimensions. All of this is looking at data mining. going to stop there.